welcome you all to Women Stop the Madness. And like I was saying, um, we are going to be super interactive. So I might stop. I might give you personal examples. I might stop and make you say something to your neighbor. I might stop and make you think of a goal really quickly for your next you know, um, assignment or something you need to do in your relationship just so that you guys could get some tidbits, you know, on to take on your way out. All right. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is that there is a distinct difference between men and women. The energy is different. So the first chapter is men and women equals apples and oranges. The reason that I said apples and oranges is because they're both really good fruit and they're kind of equal and opposite like they're not the same they're not in the same family they're not the same kind of fruit but people equate them together a lot of times apples and oranges so um the first thing that i want to talk about is that the difference in men and women is more so indeed an action than physical i know people are like well yeah duh we, we you're a woman and i'm a man but no it's more so indeed an action rather than the physical and we're so different that it's actually amazing that we can even coincide together without killing each other because we're that different. We're nothing alike. The way our thought processes are, the way we process information, the way we look at things, our perception, everything is different. So if you don't learn and get a good understanding of what you're dealing with, which is the other party, you're always gonna run into some form of conflict. So the key to making your relationship harmonious is the understanding of men and what we're dealing with. Um, and these are where most of the issues arise is because of this lack of understanding and how men are actually wired. They're just wired differently than we are. So first things first, the most simple of all the differences is that men think with a different side of the brain than women. That's just a fact that's scientific. Um, while women, we tend to go back and forth with, and use both sides of the brain. Men are very one-sided. They use one side of the brain only. So women, it allows them like a broader view of spectrums because we can go back and forth between left brain and right brain, and they don't. So the fact that men usually think with one side of the brain allows them to focus and see each issues differently, and they're able to compartmentalize. You guys know what compartmentalize means? Mm -hmm. Right, so having said that, they're able to have an issue with their wife or girlfriend or significant other, and then they're gonna go to work, and they're gonna function effectively and efficiently, and they're gonna act like that fight never even happened. And then you're gonna look and be like, oh my God, He's just okay. Now you can get into a fight with your husband or boyfriend or your mate, and then you go to work and you like fumbling, you're dropping stuff, you like, the phone's ringing, you're not listening to what they're saying because the whole time your mind is still thinking about the issue that you had in the house before you left with your husband. So I remember being married to my husband and he, we would have like a little spat and then he would go downstairs and cut hair and I would hear him cracking up with his friends like yeah, <laughs> yeah and I'd just be upstairs like oh my god so you just don't care like you not you don't even care that I'm this upset <laughs> and it's not that they don't care it's just that they're able to separate one from the two they will deal with that issue when they get back home they're not going to think about that issue when they're outside of the home so this will cause you to think that your man doesn't care or that he's uncompassionate or instant unsympathetic to your plight but that's not the case so just learn to kind of like deal with that so the first thing we're going to talk about is just the differences so we can get those out before we get into the next thing that i want to talk about uh, besides the differences is that masculine and feminine have very different energies now I call it masculine and feminine in uh, science they call it I mean spirituality they call it yin and yang um so there's always going to be a feminine and a masculine energy in every relationship that you take part in um there's always going to be one of the two energies present but the only thing about the two is based on the laws of physics and the laws of physics states that there cannot be two of the same energies in the same room at the same time so having said that if I'm trying to explain it in the best way possible without getting too deep. Okay, so woman is, has, we both have both sides of energy. Like women have masculine and feminine and male have masculine and feminine. However, women are majority ma feminine and men are majority masculine. However, if you are a woman that wants to operate in your masculine, which sometimes we have to, it's not that it doesn't happen, but if you own a business or if you have employees or if you're out in the workforce and you have to like, make things happen and make decisions that is masculine energy that so you're feelings operating. and emotions let me just separate the two feelings are what you feel based on your thoughts so when you think something you feel something that's just how it works if you think a good thought you feel good if you think a bad thought you feel bad your emotions are how 
are the agitations of your feelings. They're how you act your feelings out. So feelings are what happens inwardly and emotions are what happen outwardly. So women have an issue with having a feeling and thinking that it's okay to act out emotionally based on that feeling. Like it's okay to be angry. Nobody's saying like you can't be angry. It's okay to be angry. What's not okay is punching somebody in the face because you're angry. It's okay to be sad, but it's not okay to like just throw yourself out of a car and speed in traffic because you're sad today. Like keep your emotions in check. And that's what men don't really know how to deal with. They don't know how to deal with the fact that when we feel something, we act it instead of just expressing the feeling and saying like, look, here's the thing. What you did kind of made me really angry and not to mention sad and disappointed at the same time because I felt like you should have noticed A, B, C, D, E, and G. Instead, we might throw things. We might get so angry that they're not hearing us out. We might be um, standoffish or aloof or just walk out. Everybody has um, their differences in how they handle their emotions, but none of them are okay if they're not authentic and you're not expressing to your partner what it is that's bothering you now you cannot express what it is that's bothering you but then you shouldn't walk around and act like something's bothering you as well so if you want it to let's say i'm not really that expressive i feel like once you did it you kind of already did it me talking to you about it it's like womp womp you did it it's too late my feelings are already hurt so will i necessarily always say something when my feelings are hurt no but I will take that time to work on myself and deal with just how I'm feeling. But I won't act funny toward the person that actually did it. Unless I'm going to say something to them. So you have one option. You can either say something to them and tell them. Or you can keep it to yourself and still act normal. But what you don't want to do is put someone on an emotional roller coaster of your crazy agitated emotions. And think that they're going to stay in line and try to get on this ride. Because if, even if I see an emotional woman, I'm like, mm, that's not a ride. I'm going to get in line for um, We won't be friends. I probably won't hang out with her. Probably won't be doing too much with her. So, you know, just keep your emotions in check. Um, don't act out whatever it is that you feel. Just learn to express yourself authentically and, um, and have integrity. It's called emotional integrity when something bothers you and you're able to express it in a manner that is conducive to what you want to happen. And the bottom line is, is you just want to resolve it. You don't want to stay in conflict. You don't want to stay in anger. You don't want to stay mad at the person. Really what you want is resolve. So if you want resolve, you have to just tell them that you want resolve and that you want to get over it. Another thing is, is um, because of the emotional state, I'm going to give you some keys and some things that men may do when they feel like you are getting super emotional. I'm just going to tell you. So um, because they're more even, when you start to act crazy, whether it's because of the time of the month or just having a bad day, they don't feel like riding the wave. So this roller coaster and no one else is getting in line for it and no one likes to be around a person who's unstable in their emotions and how you act them out and it's surely going to ruin any relationship that you're in if you keep up this behavior there is not any excuse for it so the majority of them will respond the same so here are a few examples so although this may seem extreme a guy if you're getting crazy will just walk away that's the first and foremost thing that he's going to do he's going to do that so that he doesn't hit you because if another man was approaching him the way that you were, either disrespectfully, condescendingly, loud, in his face, pointing, mushing, whatever it is, I'm hoping that none of y'all in here do that stuff. No. But I've seen it happen. They walk away to protect you and to protect them. So, because they don't know what's hand going on with you emotionally, they're gonna leave the scene altogether to create space. If you don't live together, he's gonna take a few days off from you. Mm -hmm. All right, he was wilding. I'm not coming back for a couple of days. And he probably won't answer the phone either. He's just gonna, no, mm -mm, mm -mm, can't do it. If you do leave together, he may leave the house for a while to give you some time to cool off, but this is not the time to expect affection from him. That's not the time. Usually when we're all mad and emotional and irate, all we want is like a nice big hug and for a man to say, oh my God, it's okay, like I'm sorry, stop. But Unfortunately, that's not what they're going to do because they never know and they never really do what we want them to do. It just doesn't happen. So they seek to create space. You want a hug and nobody needs text messages that are like, ding, 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 ding. 
And it's like five paragraphs. He's not reading those because he knows that you're being crazy. So don't do any of it. Just when he leaves, take the time. Y'all must do that. No, somebody. <laughs> Don't call his phone a hundred times. He's gonna keep waking you. Don't try to force him to talk to you. And don't text those long drawn out messages. It's only gonna make you look crazier than he already thinks you are. So just take a step back and give him his little bit of space. Cause I promise he'll come back and then you guys will be able to talk as long as you don't act crazy again. They'll seek an outlet. Um, to seek an outlet doesn't necessarily mean to have an affair. And I know people get scared of that. It just simply means they're gonna find ways to release steam and tension. Um, it may constitute an affair, but not always. So this is a time where they're gonna take the time to do anything else besides hanging out with you. So it doesn't matter what they're doing. They could be at the gym, they could be playing ball, they could be on the golf course, whatever it is, they just don't wanna be around you. So that's what it means. They're gonna seek an outlet. They might even throw yourself into a new business venture. Whatever it is, they wanna keep up stuff like that. You can't you know, disrespect them with your tone of voice or how you word things or try to make them feel stupid. There's one thing to ask a question. It's another thing to ask a question that implies that they're idiots. You know, why, did, why would you do that like that? What made you do that? Like when you're asking a question like that, you're basically saying the question, the decision you made was stupid. I just am not saying that. I'm, I, I'm acting like I'm asking, but I don't really agree with it. Um, men repellents are the same thing. Um, men repellents are things that are like, anytime you do this, a guy is gonna run for cover. It's really just like spraying like an ant with some rays. Like, you don't wanna do these things because they're gonna go packing when this happens. Um, it's not to say that you're, um, that they're gonna be perfect um, or that they're gonna do everything right, but the way you handle it, which again, this book is about women, the way you handle it, it's gonna cause you to grow in the end. So I'm just going to give you some men repellents. The first one, obviously we just talked about it, is disrespect. That's the main and the strongest repellent. They do not like being disrespected. Um, and disrespect can, call, can fall under many categories. You can show disrespect in your tone, how you treat them, what you say. They don't like to be belittled, made fool of, spoken to like a child. Um, a lot of women talk to their husband like they're talking to a little boy. You know, why didn't you take the trash out? Like I say that to my 16 year old. You know, don't talk to him like he's a child. He's a grown man. So you don't get to talk to him like he's a kid. Talk to him like it's an adult. You know, honey, I really don't like the way the trash smells when it gets high. Do you mind taking it out for me? Show vulnerability. Don't show aggressiveness. You know, you want him to want to take out the trash. You don't want him to be like, oh, she's so aggravating. Take the trash out just because you're nagging and berating and being aggy. Like, I don't even know another word to say it, but women have a tendency to be a little aggy as opposed to being sweet and alluring and, and magnetic and making him be like, oh, man, I forgot to take the trash out. I know she don't like the smell. Let me go grab it. That's what you want him to feel. You don't want him to do it out of obligation. You want him to do it because it's in his heart to want to please So we have women have the power to lift men up or we have the power to chop them down with our words. We're good with that. That's a gift we have. Our communication and our words are really powerful. So if you have a mate, a boyfriend, and you're constantly chopping them down, why would you do that? You're gonna wear that with that? That doesn't match that. Why did you do that? Did you pick your son up that? That's. If he, even if he doesn't say anything, it's constantly pecking at him and pecking at him and pecking at him. And it's pecking away at his manhood. 